Here is the guide for Obsession Chapter 3 boss. First gonna show you the team I've used for it, then explain mechanics and then show the whole fight. Team is this, Helion Ravager that has upgraded Bleed Out and Adrenaline Rush. Other mandatory ability that could or could not be upgraded is Iron Swan. In my case Raucous Recovery and Wicked Hack are last two abilities, but you can change things around how you'd like. Up until the boss I've used Bloodlust instead of Adrenaline Rush, but that is up to you. Chaplain Vestal is crucial for the method I'm about to show you. It is because of divine comfortability and regeneration it puts on the whole team for 3 turns. You don't even have to upgrade it. Also I was using divine comfort only for the last boss. Use anything you like instead of it. Other abilities should be Sanctuary, Upgraded Mantra, Upgraded Divine Grace and Judgment. Scourge Flagellant is fantastic for this method because of his high death resistance. Important skills to have for the boss are Upgraded Punish, Upgraded Acid Rain, Deathless and more more. Last one is optional. Up until the boss I've used Fester but that is useless against the boss. Last party member is Alchemist Plague Doctor with upgraded Plague Grenade, upgraded Noxious Blast, upgraded Indiscriminate Science, Magnesium Rain upgraded if possible and Battlefield Medicine. Alchemist Path because it is much easier to blight enemies that way. Here is what you should use from trinkets and combat items. Quite simple really, healing salves on at least 2 party members, but 3 would be even better. 1 or 2 party members should have invigorating intoxicant. Some of the trinkets listed should be equipped on all characters aside flagellant to increase death resistance. As you might have figured out this method is essentially cheating death. Death resistance can go up to 90%, but due to face your failures debuff at the start of boss fight it will go down a bit. That is why with trinkets and with invigorating intoxicant we can get it back to at least close to 90%. Also don't forget to upgrade all 4 of these heroes at Altar of Hope with death resistance nodes. Ok now on to boss mechanics. First phase is very important. In this video I have completely bottled the first phase and still managed to come out on top. First phase has 4 enemies that mutate into bigger and meaner ones. Each eyeball puts a token against the same position they occupy. So eyes at position 3 will always target your position 3. Eyes at position 4 will always target your position 4. You get it. Eyes are going to mutate each round to a tier above. Every eye has 3 tiers. By getting the HP down to 0 eye goes back to previous tier. If they go back to the ground, tokens are removed and hero is free from the second phase massive damage. However, eyes spring back up and put tokens again. Your goal is to have least amount of tokens possible in party by the time boss comes. That is usually around turn 7, but it might vary a bit, not sure. So what can you do to avoid that? At round 6 for example I had 2 heroes without tokens and what I should have done is switch party positions so that characters that already have tokens get observed by spawning eyes again and not clean characters. So what I should have done is move Flagellant to position 1 at turn 6 so that respawning eye targets him instead of Helion. Should have done the same with Vestal and Plague Doctor. By not doing that all 4 characters ended up with tokens which leads to insane damage to all characters from second phase. On shrinking days. In second phase when the boss comes is when all those items and trinkets to avoid death come into play. 
Boss has two actions per turn, and if you fucked up like I did that all four characters are being targeted, it is impossible to remain alive without all the death resistance. This is where Divine Comfort from Vestal comes into play. Even though boss is going to debuff targeted characters with minus 20% healing received, it doesn't matter for this method, because Divine Comfort will always heal just enough to get characters out of death's door. That is the whole point of this method. Sanctuary and Mancha with 3 convictions also heals Vestal and protected party members, so that means 2 people healed with 1 ability. Same with Deathless from Flagellant. Adrenaline Rush from Helion helps tremendously, as well as it gives heal on attack for 3 turns. Keep healing people that are on death's door and you should be fine, that is why we have so many healing salves. These are consumables that can be used that don't waste action and can get heroes from death's door. Keep stacking damage over times on the boss while getting party members out of death's door and you should be fine. Use invigorating intoxicant on heroes with least amount of death resistance right at the beginning of phase 2. Also use divine comfort when the boss comes. I screwed up and used it before the boss appeared so it was a long cooldown during the fight. Anyway, here is the full fight from start to finish. Remember that what you are seeing in this video is the worst possible phase 1 and still managed to succeed. So don't be disheartened. Keep trying and good luck. Once again, teetering on that terrible precipice. Mire. Now climb. Self-reliance is a rare and wonderful thing. of exculpation need not be a lonely one. Through adversity and affliction, the heart beats still.
solidarity may yet arrest this collapse. Dissatisfaction.